This mandible was discovered in Algeria in 1955, but its exact classification has mystified anthropologists, due to its combination of modern and archaic traits. Many archaeologists think there is an unseen African ghost, somewhere in the time machine of human evolution. This ghost may be hiding in plain sight, but not in the region typically thought to be the cradle of humanity. Indeed, there have been new discoveries of early hominin sites in northwestern Africa, that suggest that some of our earliest ancestors lived well beyond the so-called cradle of humanity of East Africa. These discoveries are telling us that our focus on East Africa, as the birthplace of early humans is too narrow. In fact, we should be looking elsewhere, especially Algeria and Morocco. What if our ghost species was an even earlier hominin from Africa, predating Homo erectus, such as Homo habilis or Homo ergusta? Homo ergusta is one of the earliest species of our genus that lived in eastern and southern Africa, during the early Pleistocene between 1.8 million and 1.3 million years ago. Homo ergusta, meaning workman due to its advanced lithic technology, is also confusingly referred to as African Homo erectus. It was first discovered in 1949 in southern Africa. Homo ergusta was the first of our ancestors to look more like modern humans. These people were generally tall and slender and may also have been relatively hairless. The ancestry of Homo ergusta is still controversial, but it is believed to be the ancestor of later hominids such as Homo heidelbergensis, Homo sapiens, and Homo neanderthalensis, as well as Asian Homo erectus. The most complete skeleton was discovered at Lake Turkana in Kenya. Archaeologists nicknamed the 1.6 million year old specimen Turkana boy. But to muddle things up, Turkana boy is sometimes classified as early Homo erectus. However, whether Homo ergusta constitutes a species of its own, or should be subsumed into Homo erectus, is an ongoing and unresolved dispute within paleoanthropology. Proponents of synonymizing names designate Homo ergusta as Homo erectus ergusta. Nonetheless, Homo ergusta is believed to have diverged from Homo habilis between 1.9 and 1.8 million years ago, and remained stable for approximately 500,000 years in Africa, before disappearing from the fossil record around 1.4 to 1.3 million years ago. Homo ergusta displays less dimorphism than its Australopithecine ancestors, signifying less mating competition and greater social practices. This resembles modern hunter-gatherer societies. It also may have been the first hominin to harness fire, either as cooking or as lighting. This all coincides with an increase in brain size and shape. Homo ergusta may well have been the first hominin to use a human voice, a proto-language, based on the evidence of the cervical vertebrae. Even though there is no archaeological evidence, its well-evolved brain and physical capabilities suggest it may have made use of symbolic thought, such as figurative art. Homo ergusta lived on the savanna in eastern Africa, a unique environment, with challenges that would have resulted in the need for many new and distinct behaviors. Earlier humans probably used counterattack tactics, like modern primates, to keep predators away. By the time of Homo ergusta, this behavior had probably resulted in the development of true hunter-gatherer behavior, a first among primates. Indeed, Homo ergusta was thought to be an apex predator. In the beginning, evolution used to be a simple, lonely tale of one species slowly evolving into another, but there is another mysterious hominid that inhabited Algeria, more recently than Homo ergusta. Homo mauritanicus, originally known as Atlantanthropus mauritanicus, is a human species described in 1955, on the basis of fragmentary fossils found in northern Algeria. This site is located about 12 miles east of the Algerian site, known for its remains of Homo ergusta. Initially, the fossil was considered sufficiently different to justify a new genus and species. The various human species were all reduced in the 1960s to a single genus, and researchers, who consider this species to be potentially valid today, speak of Homo mauritanicus. In reality, the fragmentary nature and rarity of human fossils for the period ranging from 1 million years to 600,000 years ago in Africa, have not led to the emergence of a consensus. Researchers continue to disagree on the taxonomic attribution of these fossils, consisting of three mandibles, and other African fossils of this period. The three mandibles are together an enigma. 
most scientists have considered them to be Homo erectus, but this seems unlikely. One jawbone is an extremely large and tall mandible of an older adult. Another mandible was dated to 500,000 years, and other remains dated to around 650,000 years. The first mandible, found in 1954, is mostly complete. The jaw is heavy, and at the front the profile is smooth and receding. There is no sign of a chin, and the teeth are very large by modern standards. The second specimen consists of the left half of a mandible, while the third is virtually intact. The third mandible is the largest of the fossil individuals. The development of bony ridges present on the body and along the base of the jaw, along with other features, suggests that this individual is male. One of the smaller mandibles is likely to be female. In addition to the mandibles, a hominin parietal bone, the side wall of the cranium, was also recovered, as were some isolated teeth. This material was compared with the remains of other archaic humans, and resemblances to Chinese Homo erectus were observed. I wanted to quickly ask you to subscribe to the channel, so YouTube knows you find us highly compelling and recommends us to a larger audience. Then smash the like button, share the video, and leave a comment. Thank you for your support, because getting more views gives me more time for important web-based research. Further archaeological digs produced additional material, including three human mandibles. The Algerian deposits consist of layers of hard grayish clays and sands of a small lake, or swamp. The surrounding environment of this area was probably treeless and arid, as inferred from the species of animals present. The fossils of those animals, along with geologic evidence, date the site to about 700,000 years ago. But other anthropologists who studied the fossils, found the remains to be dentally similar to other African species, but much larger than Homo antecessor, a human species from Spain. The anthropologists found affinities between Homo mauritanicus, and Homo antecessor, dated to about 850,000 years old. As well as a possible affiliation of these two species with the last African Homo ergaster, and an unknown species, that may be the ancestor of Homo sapiens. They postulated that the Homo antecessor remains of Spain, and the contemporaneous remains from Algeria, represent the same population, because 14 of the 15 dental features listed for Homo antecessor, have also been identified in the Middle Stone Age of North Africa. This would mean that Homo antecessor is a synonym of Homo mauritanicus, so the Spanish and Algerian hominids should be classified as Homo mauritanicus. The Strait of Gibraltar is the Atlantic entryway to the Mediterranean, where Spanish and Moroccan banks are only 45 miles apart. But a decrease in sea levels in the Pleistocene, due to glaciation, would not have brought this down to less than 30 miles. In fact, deep currents push westwards, and surface water flows strongly back into the Mediterranean, making the crossing very difficult and unlikely. This also would call into question the out-of-Africa hypothesis for Homo sapiens, and support evidence for an out-of-Eurasia theory. Indeed, there is evidence that the ancestor of Homo antecessor and Homo sapiens originated in south-central Eurasia. We could get into a protracted conversation about whether humans should even be classified by species and subspecies, but that is beyond the scope of this video. Nonetheless, anthropologists still recommend reviving Homo mauritanicus to house all early Pleistocene North African specimens, under the name Homo ergaster mauritanicus. East Africa is famously the birthplace of humankind, and the location where our ancient hominin ancestors first invented sophisticated stone tools. This technology, dating back to 2.6 million years ago, is then thought to have spread around Africa and the rest of the world. Indeed, excavations in Spain have found stone tools that date back to over 1 million years. Archaeologists believe the tools are attributed to Homo ergaster and Homo antecessor. The tools were used by the earliest humans to settle and occupy the Iberian Peninsula. The excavated quartzite tools were used as choppers, to cut meat and wood. These tools represent the first instances of technological innovation in human history, where our ancestors first began to enhance their biological abilities with the manufacture of stone tools, which speaks to an important milestone in the evolution of our ancestors. Tool production is thought to be intimately linked to major changes in cognitive development, geographic ranges, and morphological features, like body and brain size. 
Although the exact nature of these relationships remains contested, it coincides with the timing of our genus' first use of fire or hunting. But new research has uncovered an archaeological site in Algeria containing similar tools that may be as old as 2.44 million years. This suggests that human ancestors spread to the region much earlier than previously thought, or that the stone tool technology was simultaneously invented by earlier hominin species, outside East Africa. The artifacts belong to the Aldoan industry, the oldest known stone tool industry. Rounded river cobbles, used as hammer stones, were used to flake other cobbles, turning them into simple cores. The flakes were then transformed into scrapers, and various knives, by resharpening their edges. Essentially, this was a toolkit for processing animal tissue, such as marrow, bone, and brain tissue, but also plant material. Which hominin species first created Aldoan tools is unknown, but it was potentially Homo habilis, Homo ergaster, or maybe even Australopithecus. The implements were found near many of the fossilized bones, which had cut marks that clearly indicated the site was used to butcher animals. The bones came from extinct animals similar to crocodiles, elephants, and hippopotamuses. And the cut marks may mean these hominins were actively hunting, not just scavenging. The tools are too old to have been made by Homo sapiens, and no remains of other hominins have been found, so it's unclear which branch of the early human family was using the tools. Thus, while East Africa is normally the region most associated with early stone tools, there's new evidence these tools were used in northwestern Africa around the same time. This throws a wrench in the idea that East Africa is the cradle of humanity, 